Uh, there is no better feeling than sitting behind your kit, putting your headphones on, and just letting your hands go. You start off a little slow to let things warm up, but oh man, once the blood starts flowing, you are unstoppable. Your hands keep going faster and faster. The BPMs are flying up, 170, 180, 200. You set the camera up because you can't believe how fast you are playing and you let it rip. You can't wait to watch it back to see how fast you are playing until you realize. Oh crap. I suck. Let's face it, I feel like we have all been in the position where we have felt like we sounded super fast or super clean on the drum kit, only to find out when we reviewed the footage, we were in fact neither of those things. Now over the years, I have found three pillars of hand speed that have helped me improve my hand speed in a big way. And now, well, I'm gonna tell them to you because well, that, that, that's what we do here. Now, hand speed might not actually be as basic as you believe it to be. I think a lot of us just think, well, we just need to move faster, but there are actually these three different components. Number one is your technique. You can only get your speed to a certain level if you have bad technique. Number two is pattern memorization. You need to be able to know and understand these patterns to be able to move quickly. Because if your brain is trying too hard to think too fast, well, that's where everything falls apart. Number three is muscle development. We actually need to train and develop our muscles to be able to play at the speed that we want. Kind of like a runner would train their legs to be able to run faster. Now let's take these three pillars and dive into each one a little bit more in depth and by the end create an exercise that is gonna help you improve your hand speed. So let's jump right into it. No, oh, that didn't work. One more time. All right, so first let's talk about our technique. Our technique is super important to our hand speed because like I said, if we are playing with the wrong technique, we're basically putting a ceiling on our hand speed. Now let's talk about push-pull technique. So what you're gonna do is you are going to bring your stick down and allow it to come up like this. That way your fingers are able to pull the stick back. So then you can go back and forth and as you start to go faster, that range of motion is going to get smaller. Push, pull, push, pull. So what I want you to simply start off doing is at a very slow tempo, just pushing the stick down, pulling it back up with your fingers, pushing it down, pulling it back up, and just alternating between those two hands. So one measure playing eighth notes, just alternating every two notes. So that would look just like this. One and two and three and four and. Then the second measure, I want you to alternate every four notes. So that would look like this. One and two and three and four and. And that's the full exercise. I want you to repeat that at a very slow tempo. 60 is a great place to start. And don't get discouraged when the stick starts to fly out of your hand. Trust me, it's gonna happen, but this is gonna help your finger dexterity and even a little bit of that muscle development too, but primarily, it is going to improve your technique. Throwing those, now I got oh God. All right, the second pillar is pattern memorization. Do you ever wonder why you can play your singles and maybe doubles faster than you can play most of your rudiments? Now, a big factor there has to do with your pattern memorization, meaning your brain has the pattern of singles and doubles much more memorized than it does maybe a six stroke roll or a paradiddle. Now, because of that, let me show you a quick exercise that can help us memorize a couple of these rudiments a little bit better. So what we are gonna be doing in this exercise is playing paradiddles for one measure, which is simply right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Now for the second measure, we are going to play a paradiddle diddle as 16th notes. Now the sticking pattern for that is 
right, left, right, right, left, left. So it's a six note pattern. Now what's so cool about this exercise is that after two measures, the pattern actually flips. Now that second measure, we only have enough space to play two paradiddle diddles and a half, basically just a paradiddle at the end, which then sets up our left hand to get started on the third measure of paradiddles, left hand lead, then leading into the fourth measure of left hand lead paradiddle diddles. And then it sets us up to start it all back over on measure one with our right hand. Not only does this help you get better at learning these rudiments better and memorizing them better, it helps you combine rudiments together and it also helps you get a better feel for right hand lead rudiments as well as your left hand lead, which is super important. So let's just go over what this exercise looks like real quick all together. Pillar number three, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, pillar number three is muscle development. And this can be really important to your hand speed as well because you need to build those surrounding muscles like your forearms, your wrists, your hands, your fingers. First way we can build muscle development is through a process called Tabata. Now, this is something that people use in the gym all the time and it essentially just means for 20 seconds, you do something as fast as you possibly can, and then you get a 10 second rest, and then you keep repeating the process. And generally, you do eight rounds of this, reaching up to four minutes in length. Now, this seriously burns. Setting the timer and playing as fast as you can, For 20 seconds straight is no joke. By the end of this Tabata cycle, your forearms will be screaming at you. Now, if you are looking for a technique that doesn't require sticks or a pad and that you can do anywhere, well, let me tell you a little bit more about clapping. As ridiculous as it sounds, if you put your forearms together as well as your wrist and you clap like this, for an extended period of time, this is a extreme burnout. This can really help develop those forearm and wrist muscles and prepare your limbs for endurance. Plus the best part is you can do it literally anywhere. All right, so now that you are familiar with the three pillars of hand speed, it's time to put them all together into a nice little routine for you to build that hand speed. DBO Academy, I just released a brand new course called the Hand Speed Challenge, in which me and the members are doing a different hand speed workout every single day for the next 30 days to see how much faster our hands get. It's almost like we are going to the gym for our hand speed. Now, doors don't open again until February for DBO Academy, but the good news is I am releasing the Hand Speed Mini Challenge, in which I'm gonna give you the first week of this course for free if you click right here or in the link in the description below. I think even in just using the exercises from this first week, your hands will get a lot faster. So make sure you check that out. But that's all I've got for you today. Stay true and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye everyone.
Oh crap. I suck. Oh crap. I suck. Oh freaking crap. <laughs> oh crap. I suck. Oh frick balls. <laughs> I can't. Oh crap. I suck. Oh crap. I suck. Holy frick nuts. <laughs>